In the previous video, we discussed counting arguments in cases where the sets were not disjoint, where when I'm considering how many elements in one set or another, or potentially both, if there's elements in both sets, then the argument was a little bit more complicated. And that was because if I said, taking the example of the previous video, I had 70 people who reported they drank coffee the previous day. I had 40 people who reported they drank tea the previous day. With just that information, I don't know how many people had tea or coffee. It could be as many as 70 plus 40, if there was no overlap. It could be as few as 70, if all 70 of the, um, in that example, coffee drinkers were also all tea drinkers. So I'd need to know how much the sets overlap in order to consider uh, how much double counting there is, how many people are counted in both set A and set B to know how many people are in sets A or B or both. And this idea is the inclusion exclusion principle, where I would include everybody in every set they were in. But then I would go back and I would correct it by excluding once the people who've been double counted. Not removing them from the data set, they're still counted as an A and a B. But then I remove the A and Bs because I know they've been double counted. So if we consider two sets A and B, which may or may not be disjoint. The number of elements in A or B, or potentially both, is the number of elements in A, cardinality of A, plus the number of elements in B, cardinality of B, minus the number which are in both, so minus the cardinality of A into section B. So in terms of the size of sets, I have the cardinality of A union B, the number in the sets A or B, is the number in the set for A, plus the number in the set for B, but the number of elements which are in both A and B have been double counted, so I need to exclude um, the number of elements in the set A into section B. So this is not really a proof, but we can sort of see this visually. So if I start with a Venn diagram with two sets A and B, which potentially contain some elements in the overlap, then if I just take what part of that corresponds to A or B, well, it's the two circles and their overlap, but not the bit outside. And I can see that that's everything of A plus everything in B by the time I've removed A. The bit of B that I've sort of cut out on the right is the size of the overlap, is the size of A intersection B. So you can sort of mentally do the jigsaw and push those pieces back together and can see the size of A plus the size of B after the overlap with A has been removed. And this idea extends up to more than two sets. It gets a little bit more complicated. But if I've got three sets, A, B, and C, then what we have is that the cardinality of A union B union C is the cardinality of A plus the cardinality of B plus the cardinality of C. But any element which is, a, is, is in A and B, A and section B, has been counted as an A and counted as a B, so it's been double counted. So I need to subtract it. Similarly, I need to subtract the size of A into section C, and I need to subtract the size of B into section C, because any element which is in two of those sets has been counted in the individual sets 
for both of them, so it needs to be subtracted so it's not double counted. But following that logic creates another problem, because if anything is in all three sets, I've counted it in A, plus counted it in B, plus counted it in C, so I've triple counted it. But then I've excluded it because it's in A and B, and I've excluded it because it's in A and C, and I've excluded it because it's in B and C. So I've added it three times, included three times, then excluded three times. So I've completely removed it, and I don't want to do that. I want to count that. So we need to add back in the overlap of A and B and C, A, intersection B, intersection C. Now, justifying that graphically can be done just as I did before. It gets a little bit messier and harder to see. Your sort of mental jigsaw skills have to be higher level here. But if I pull that apart, that's the part of A, union B, union C, the bit that's just inside those three circles. And if I pull that apart, then you can see that if I take the top circle, then I can have that as A, but with A and C removed. And then the bottom left circle I can take as B with A and B removed. And the bottom right circle I can consider as C with B and C removed. So we can see that I can got something similar. But if I do that and just remove one of the overlaps from each, so I remove the A and C overlap from A, I remove the A and B overlap from B, and I remove the B and C overlap from C, if you sort of mentally cut those pieces out and reassemble them, I still won't quite have the original areas of the Venn diagram because I'll be missing still the little bit in the middle. That's in none of those um, three regions at the bottom. So I need to consider A with A and C removed, B with A and B removed, C with B and C removed, but then I need to add back in the area corresponding to being in all three. So that's the same argument as we had for two on the previous slide. Although I will concede that's maybe a little bit harder to visualize mentally. We can extend this inclusion exclusion principle to four, five, six, 10, any number of sets. Although I will concede that it gets increasingly hard to justify visually. My eyesight's not good enough and I don't hate you enough to subject you to this. But if I wanted to know how many elements were in A or B or C or D, I'd add up the sizes of the four sets. Then I would subtract all of the double counts. But then I'd have to add back in all of the triple counts. But then I'd have to subtract the fourfold count. Similarly, if I had five sets, I'd add the singles, subtract the doubles, add back in the triples, subtract all of the fourfolds, add back in the fivefold. So I've got this reversing sign of I. I'm constantly correcting, but then overcorrecting, and then correcting, and then sort of overcorrecting at each stage. And each stage sort of gets me closer to the final answer. And then once I've got all of those bits together, then I can get the final count. But this gets, as you can see, I'm sure, it gets increasingly messy. Uh, 